Again, we uh, we are in the book of James, which I said on last week that most of the the powers that be thought that James should not even be included in the New Testament. But my reading of James say James should have definitely been included. He he talks about issues that that we deal with every day, the tongue, that deadly weapon. He talks about that, and he, he talks about faith without works is dead. And then this morning, James leaves us to a, a question about wisdom. So I thought about wisdom. I said, well, what is wisdom? And I, I looked it up. It says the quality of having experience, you know, the quality of having knowledge and the quality of having good judgment and the quality of being wise. I say, okay, well, be wise. What, what does it mean to be wise? And then it says character, characterized by wisdom, marked by a deep, deep understanding and a keen discernment and a capacity for sound judgment. Now, you know, we, uh, as Christians and as people, men and women both, we work hard for money. Amen? Amen. Many hours of a day. Amen? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we look like it's not enough hours in the day. Many days in a week. You know, sometimes working seven not having a day off, many weeks in the year, don't even know when we're going to get off. We need that Sabbath rest sometimes. And many years of schooling. Why? We endure all kind of difficult. I don't know about you, but I remember some mornings I didn't feel like going to work. It was cold. It was raining. Hey, all the things. I was hurting. But guess what? We got up and we endured all of these difficulties and, and made it to work with a smile on our face. So, so then what, what is wisdom? What, what, what are we seeking? You know, we, 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 we seek all of this after, after money. And I, I want to ask the question, would a million dollars be enough? <laughs> huh? Would a million dollars be enough? Wisdom and understanding are more important than that money. We need to get our priorities right. You know, when we think about the, the, the scripture uh, uh, and talk about wisdom, you know, Proverbs taught us a little about wisdom in 16th chapter. 16th verse, he taught, talked about Solomon and said Solomon had riches way beyond anything that we can ever imagine, you know. You have all, you know, what would it be like to have all the money and everything that you wanted? Would, would, would that satisfy you? Would you be all right? You heard me say on last Sunday that Howard Hughes had all of that. Still was a very, very, very lonely man. But, but David told Solomon to, to get wisdom and understanding above all else. So our greatest goal in this life should be to get an understanding, not just an understanding of, of what man wants or what, yeah, what woman wants, but an understanding to know what God wants. An understanding of what God wants from us. An understanding of how we as Christians ought to be, ought to react to the people of the world, the good people of the world. You know, I, I wonder sometimes if a, if a poor man told you to get wisdom, what would you think? You probably wouldn't believe him because you would say, now, if he had wisdom, he wouldn't be in the situation that he in because we place wisdom in the point, uh, in, 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 in what we possess, money. It could easily be dismissed and his, his instructions would be invalid. 
because we compare a man based on how much wealth he has, what kind of house he lives in, what kind of car he's driving, what kind of uh, clothes he wear, what name brings. But Solomon said that he ranks wisdom higher than anything that you could ever have. In our scripture lesson, we go into the 13th verse. It tells us, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? What do we, who do we consider wise? Is the person to have the big job? Set behind the desk? Who do we consider wise? Scripture says, well, let him show out of a good conversation, show his works. I'm not talking about the works gain possession. I'm not talking about the works that that, that got him the big house or, or he's able to drive the big car. I'm, I'm not talking about those types of possessions. I'm talking about where I can, uh, a possession where I know who God is. I know who God is to me and what I am to him. The meekness of wisdom. Sometimes you have to just come off your, your high horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we get there sometimes now. <laughs> you know, we, uh, <laughs> we have a lot of, Lord knows, it, and my wife loves love to use it, educated food. You have all, all the education in the world. But they don't have the wisdom of how to use it. And then he moves down and he says in that, uh, we move down, that, down to the next chapter, next verse. And he says, but if you have bitter envy, see, sometimes we, we envy folk by what they have. And so, man, I go to church every Sunday. Being at church, give my tithes and everything else. That man across the street don't ever go to church. Don't ever do anything. Look at that car he drives. Look at that house he lives in. But see, you don't ever know what he's doing to get that. And see, envy is one of the things. That's what I like about James. He talks about these things. He talks about envy and how, how we have strife in our heart. And, 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 and we, 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 Look at people for what they have. And so we, we, we shouldn't glory in, in, in those possessions. Now, sometimes the truth, the Bible says the truth shall what? Make you free. And so what you do to gain your, your possessions might not be what God has in store for you. He's blessed us in many ways. I listened to uh, uh, one of my pastor friends this morning as he was preaching, and he was talking about, uh, uh, <laughs> in fact, he, he was talking about the Lion King. And he was talking about that little saying, what is it, them kids, no Makita, Matata, whatever it is. And he says, it's no worries. What would it be like to not worry? Would that be better than money? Would that be better than possession? Would that be better than anything that we can have physically? Just to not worry. Trust God for who he is. You see that title of wisdom that I had? I had a little deal under there that said, forward all issues heaven and I know when I had everything separated I know Joe they said what what is he doing and finally she wrote me back she said faith when we fall with all issues to heaven that's faith regardless of what I have of what I don't have I have faith to know that God is going to bless me in spite of myself I have no worries because I'm God. My father in heaven is rich. Everything that he has is mine. And so 
We need to look at life a little different. And like David told Solomon, it's not in riches. It's not in the things that you have. I say, but wisdom is more than that. He said, but if you harbor bitterness and envy and self-ambition in your heart, you see, those are the things, the wisdom that, that, that we have from then does not come from heaven. The wisdom we have coming from man, we're doing everything to please man. But we, the wisdom that we're seeking comes from heaven. And it gives us things that we, other folk can't understand. He said, I'll take the wise, and the wise don't understand why we serve a God. You take the wise and turn that into foolishness. Above all, but, but the earth and, and all this stuff that we have, all the things that we are striving to get, those things are what have gotten the world into the trouble that we're in now. We're so caught up on possessions and we follow every little whim that goes along. We have all the things that takes us away from being the church that we need to be and following the God that we need to follow. And all those things are tools of the devil. Envy, tools of the devil. Looking at other folk for who they are, tools of the devil. But we, when we look at God and, and trust God for who he is, because he says, for well, where envy and strife is, hmm, that's confusion. People don't understand how you can serve a God that you don't see because they're too caught up in what this world can give. They don't understand that that's foolishness to them. As confusion and every evil thing works within envy. So we as a church must get on one accord with God, follow God for who he is. Instead of worrying about the things that we have, forward all issues toward heaven. Anything that you're dealing with, if you're sick, pray. Pray unto God. If you're having money problems, pray it unto God. My God has everything that you need. When we fall on our issues toward heaven, instead of taking them to man, we'll, you know, we'll believe anything that man say. And then when we've exhausted everything that man says, then we want to go to God. But the wisdom that comes from above is, is pure, for one thing. It's not going to see you. God is not a man that he should lie. God teaches us and he brings us into in his fold and he, he, he tells us things, but we only need to seek him and find it, find it out for ourselves. Try him. What one old saying was try the spirit by the spirit. You know, we have to be peaceful. Too much anger in this world you know just the other day a, a man lost his life because he had a little dent in his car a father lost a, a children lost their father a wife lost her husband over something as simple as a dent in a car that could easily be repaired and easily be fixed but yet we, in anger, took a life. Now, not only is one family destroyed, but you destroyed two families. We have to be peaceful about where we endure and how we treat God's people. And be easy about how we are entreated. Full of mercy. If God held us to account for all the things that we've done, we would have no way of ever even thinking about going to heaven. But because of his mercy and his grace, he's blessed us and given us another opportunity. Thank God that he allows U-turn. He allows us to turn around and get back on the, the right track and, and 
All he gives is good fruit, blessings, in spite of who we are, blessings, all the wrong that we've done, still blessings. The sun shines upon us even in the midst of our wrongdoing. You know, he does that without partiality. He didn't ask whether or not you, how much money you had in your bank. He didn't ask what kind of car you drove. He didn't ask what kind of house you live in. He didn't ask what kind of job you have. But it's all because he treats all of us the same. And if we could only do that without mankind, instead of doing, you know, well, we treat this person this way because they're able to provide this. And we treat this person this way because they can't provide. We need to start working and treating people like God treats us. What if God did us the way that we do people? Do we actually take all our issues to heaven? Or do we try everything here on earth before we even think about praying? Prayer is a key. Faith unlocks the door. Faith is that, that, that one thing that holds us fast. But then James tells us faith without works is dead. So if you say you have faith, then show me your faith. If you say you have faith, let me see your faith in the works that you do. You know, Lord, it's too much wrong going on in not only the world, in our communities, but I'm going to say even in the church. Sometimes we're not acting like we ought to act. We mad at this person because they're in a the position. We mad at that person because they said this and we don't like how they said instead of going to that person and talking with them. James tell us that we ought to be able to go to our brother, talk to our brother. And if there's anything wrong, get together and work it out. But we don't operate in those deals anymore. We do everything that Satan tells us to do instead of listening. And sometimes when we listen to God, guess what? He says, don't say anything. Just be quiet. Then he goes on in that 18th verse, and, and he says, and the fruits of righteousness is sown in peace. Fruits of righteousness. You know, when you're on one accord and you're right in what you're doing, nothing happens but peace. Peace in the midst of a storm. It's hard to have an argument if with one person. If you're not saying anything, there's nothing to argue about. It's sown in peace. I uh, wonder, do we ever submit ourselves to God when we're thinking about the things that we do? You know. Do we, before we act, pray and ask God to come in our situation and ask God to lead where we need to go. Ask God to bear us up when, we, when we're weak. Ask God to, to bless us even in spite of what we're doing. Ask God to, to guide us. Completely submitting yourself to God. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Because they don't come from you. They're coming from a part of you that, that's not godly. We have to learn to walk in faith. Treat God like he wants to be treated. 
allow him to resonate in our being, knowing that God and God only can bring us to where we need to be. And in verse three, uh, four and three, God says, Submit yourself to him. When we submit to God, guess what? Satan can't live in a body that have submitted themselves to God. You know, uh, he don't want no parts of anything that's God. You know, when when all the things that he did to, to Job, you know, God told him, he said, you know, this is my servant. You can you can go try try Job. That's my servant. He said you can do anything to him, but just don't take his life. I don't know what Job went through. I can't even imagine. I've had one ball. I can't imagine having balls all over my body, losing my whole family, losing all his possession. But yet, Job stood. For the Lord, he said, what? Naked I came into this world, naked I shall return. So when you submit yourself to God, God restores to you more than you can ever imagine. Look what happened to Job. Things were restored sevenfold. Why? Because he resisted the devil. He walked and held fast to his faith. Even in the midst of all the hurt, harm, danger, God didn't say that we wouldn't go through problems. We all experience all types of problems and, 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 and uh, health problems or, or money problems, or, or, or spousal problems. All of these things are going on. But God is still there because he's never left us. You know, a lot of times we we think we're walking alone, but God is right there with us. When you don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit prays for you. That's the way God is. If you just continue to, to, to submit yourself to God and stay in his life, allow him into your heart. I'm not talking about just, you know, just speak his name, but when he becomes a part of your heart, when he lives within you, when he everything that you do and everything that you're about is about God, then Satan cannot deal with you. Resist the devil, what? And he will flee from you. Satan can't stay in a house built by God. Just like God won't be in a temple of sin amen so we have to learn to 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 live our lives according to who we are and whose we are and then he closed it out and he says in verse eight if you draw near to god hmm, he'll draw to near he'll draw near to you yes we've gone through some things Yes, we've done some things that we might not be proud of. Yes, sometimes we don't feel like we're even good enough. But see, that's the God that I serve. He opens and he allows us to come in no matter where you are, no matter how deep in sin that you thought you've been. God can pick you up and watch you whiter than snow. If you just draw near to him. Sometimes we have to just cleanse our hands and, you know, and, and, and trust God for who he is. Say, Lord, I know who I am. I'm a, I'm a sin. I, 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 I'm a sinner saved by your grace. Lord, I need you in my life. I invite you into my life right now. Lord, all that I'm going through, I need you to, to wash me, cleanse me, bring me closer to you. Open my eyes that I can see all that you want me to see. Lord, that's the God we serve. Yeah, we're sinners. 
Purify your heart. Purify your heart in the things that you do. Purify your heart. Sometimes it might be in a song. Sometimes it might be in a prayer. When you're going through something, everybody has a song or a prayer that you can just pray on and just and sing that, that brings you back into that mind of God. Put you back on the right track. Turn you around and get you back in the relationship with God. Yes. I know sometimes we don't feel that we're able to be back with the Lord or we shouldn't be back with the Lord. But we can't be double man. You either going to be for me or you're going to be against me. He says, you're either going to be hot or you're going to be cold. And he said, you know, God don't want, he said, I, I, we got a lot of us straddle the fence. We want to be this way one way and this way another day. But God say, I spew you from me. So let us at this day mm. say that when I'm going through something, when I'm dealing with things, mm. I'm going to forward all of my issues toward heaven. Mm. I'm going to lift my hands and I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to trust God for who he is. And I'm going to allow him into my spirit. I'm going to allow him into my heart. I'm going to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth, knowing that, Lord, you can do anything but prayer. Wisdom comes from above. When we forward all our issues to heaven, we can do anything but fail. We say it all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of the church. Amen. 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 Amen.